Hey guys, um, today we're gonna do um, a build order. Uh, we're gonna do double TC uh, build order for Mongols. Um, just got back from a rugby match, so I'm super tired. I uh, don't know if I'm gonna play ranked tonight. My hands are really sore as well, so I think I'm just gonna do some build order stuff tonight, and uh, we'll see. I might play a couple ranks, but um, for now, I was thinking I was gonna do a uh, build order. <clears throat> so this is um before we start it, I uh, just want to explain it a little bit. Um, this is a build um that I like to use against English for sure. Um, um, it's probably viable against um a couple of sieves. I think it's probably viable. I mean, it it, it depends a lot in terms of um what your opponent is doing because you're basically going no army to about the seven eight minute mark that being said you can transition into hard aggression pretty easily in this um and um i guess it's uh, you know depending also on the map if you're playing like hill and dale or kind of a campy map uh, with choke points and stuff if you kind of feel like they're gonna boom or if you're scouting them and it looks like they're gonna boom uh, i think this build is uh, a pretty good thing it is um pretty apm intensive um you know managing the two tcs and your eco and everything at the same time but um yeah so let's just uh start it up so you guys can see grab my town center um i'm gonna look you know my gold is pretty far but i'm right next to this um this wood or this stone here so it's actually a good spot to be is by the stone um bring this girl over here drop our uvu and we're gonna start collecting this wood that's right next to our gold. And the reason we uh, collect this that's right next to our gold is because we're going to be collecting gold after this. Um, I usually don't go to scouts. Like on some matchups, I do. Um, but it's not, I don't think, feel, I don't feel like it's necessary. Pulling my villager from Ubu um, Onto food. When these guys finish collecting, I shift click them onto the gear and then onto the gold. We're gonna. Um, we only need now. We only need 50 uh, wood or stone. Sorry, for um, uh, get our wheelbarrow. So one minute four. We're tapping that up. So 2:30. We'll be finishing a wheelbarrow. This is gonna synergize really well. Um. With um, our deer stones, one thing too is um, with this build, when you've got your gold closer, kind of to your wood line, it's gonna help with your timing. So once we, you know, collect this 200, we're gonna send our villagers over here, and um, when you are a little bit closer, it does work out a little bit nicer. Um. I, what I usually find for time-wise, um, you're going to have about two and a half minutes, 2.45, three minutes max um, to finish your scouting and bring your comm back. Um, we've got a decent sheep haul here. Okay, so we just finished. We just finished our two hundred there. So we're gonna send them over to um, get one more villager on food. Actually, let's just transition now to oops. Uh, um, <clears throat> send them over to wood now. Eleven, twelve on food is is usually more than enough to get a good age up time. Um, we're gonna bring a con over now with 11 villagers on food we're gonna definitely finish up a lot faster make sure we're always uh, having two villagers in the queue we're just gonna leave this here um there's a variation of this build with forestry i've done a lot of tests forestry is not really worth it in my opinion um it is cheaper than the wheelbarrow, but the boost you're getting is less overall. Um, the wheelbarrow is going to affect your economy overall a lot better. And um, I think a big thing too is that you are... 
you're overall bursting, buffing your eco better, but as well, you're getting a kind of a synergizing effect with um, um, with the wheelbarrow. So try to separate three villages for the age up, and we're gonna drop deer stone with them, and then I'm gonna reduce. Um, our wood collector, food collectors are to, um, just four food collectors. We don't really need more. We only need for constant production. We just need four bills on food. And now I just kind of make sure my food is always, um, 100% committed here, uh, onto villagers and, uh, onto the wood line. Um, these villagers, when they finish tapping up, so this is kind of, I guess, the big transition point. Um, you guys are going to kind of see in your games, depending on what your opponent is, what he's doing, what he's building. Um, you kind of have to see what, what he's up to. So, I mean, this is AI. So it's not the same by any means. But... Um... Usually, I take these three from my deer stones onto my gold, and then these villagers that are on um, wood, I'll take about 10 of them to build a second TC. I usually try to build, sometimes it's good to build a second TC like out here on the deers. Actually, this is a pretty good spot here because we're right next to a wood line. The only thing is, depending on what who your opponent is, what civ he is, um, how aggressive he's going to play uh, the, the matchup. Um, sometimes putting that second TC way out here is actually, um, going to be really hard for you. Uh, it's going to be worse for you because you're going to have to deal with, um, a raid a little bit better. Now, given that you're the Mongols and you're kind of the raiding Civ, and since you're not doing any raidings for a long time, he might, uh, not even react to it. So here, um, our dear sons is up. All of our villagers are getting buffed. They also have the the um, the buff for um, wheelbarrow. So okay, we're pretty close there. We're gonna drop it on the other side over here. We just need a couple turn-ins. There we go, and we'll just drop it here. It's a little farther than I probably would um, in terms of when I actually play. Um, I'll take villagers from this TC and send them on to um, food now. And I'll take these three villagers and I think I'm going to go on to... I think we're going to send them on to food. And we might just pull about four of you guys onto wood. And I want these new villagers. I really do want them on food or on, on wood. So we're going to send them here on the wood just for now. Um, and I want these 12 villagers actually to drop off here. I want them to start collecting deer. Um, so from here, a big thing that you guys are going to have, to, you guys are going to see in your games and whatnot is um scouting your opponent seeing what he's doing in terms of military and um so this is kind of a mistake on my part um not having our food production going so that's another thing when you know when i transition these guys onto the deer um make sure that you have enough in the bank to do it to keep constant villager production um, it's better not to just do it immediately, like I kind of like what I just did. It is important to have food production going at all times. Um, the big advantage you get from the second TC is uh, double villager production. So I kind of messed up there. I could have continued gathering with the sheep here, stored up enough to to have um, double villager production. But since it's just kind of like a thing, um, it's not end the world. So. We're going to build two villagers for basically each TC, so it's cranking out units. Um, once we're up to um, 15 um, vills on wood, I think that's more than enough, if not too many, 
and um, sometimes I don't even go up to 15. I say like 10 or 11. And I'm transitioning um, to food and, and um, gold. So here, you know, once I'm start starting looking to age up, depending on what the army is doing, you know, I also have a double stables going. That's also a big thing. Um, you got to make sure you've got your infrastructure going. Um, one big thing, one big plus with the double stables is um, the horsemen are one are very fast um, in terms of production. So you can be pumping out um, horsemen really quick. You can have an army to deal with any push fairly quickly with horsemen. Same with barracks or ranges if you go with the foot variations of their um, units. Um, infantry, I mean, barracks, you don't have a choice but to go infantry. Um, but yeah, so that's this is basically the the build, and you can see really quickly we can we can have an army up and going. Um, yeah, we're gonna have ten horsemen up really fast. So that's the big thing. Make sure you, your infrastructure stays up while you're doing this type of stuff. Um, behind this, you know, I get we usually villagers start building uh, pastures, infrastructure going behind. Um, the the collection that's going you know it's good to have your girl out here with a bunch of villagers collecting as well um but you do eventually need to start stabilizing your pastures and uh yeah that's basically i mean that's basically it um so um yeah that's just uh this kind of build that i feel like is pretty strong you do just have to um um, it does get a little bit intensive in terms of the APM, and then you do have to transition your army uh, pretty good. Um, another thing is we can basically look to age up pretty pretty quickly. Um, I also said here, you know, like little, little details like this, you know. Um, the... The the villagers, you know, we got third, we got a bunch of villagers on um on f uh, wood right now, and it's not a bad thing, but it's also not um ideal. And uh, yeah, I mean, even though I mean, this is just the AI, so you're gonna be facing a lot more pressure than this. I feel like the the hardest AI really isn't that good, but we can go with that greedy 2TC build, have more than enough um, eco to deal with anything he can produce, and um, we can look to age up at the same time. So we'll drop this, and then you know we can start dropping infrastructure behind this. So there's a lot of things you can start towering. You know, with these, I usually stop at 15 um, on wood, but you know, you see that your, your wood production is strong enough that they basically have one guy constantly building if not two or three and that's usually what I do um, the later the game goes I uh, I have um, a couple villagers going at the same time so here we can age up depending again on uh, what uh, what's happening in terms of the opponent uh, their build and whatnot um, you can definitely um, age up with the, the the curl tie and there's definitely some games where afterwards I'm I wish I had aged up with the curl tie instead so um, yeah that's, so that's the big thing try to keep this queue always with four villagers um, you know make sure you got plenty of, of, of villager production going there your upgrades um, some you know some guy depending on if they're not pushing you if you can get a fast enough age up for castle you can just double produce knights you lose a con so biggie and uh okay so we lose this fight this actually might not be a bad example to show you guys. Um, um, 
some double night production. Uh, you can get this out. Um, another thing too, once I hit castle, I try to dedicate around uh, 10, 11 villagers onto gold. It's really important we have strong gold production um, to pump out our, our gold units. Um, TC went idle again. You know, pumping it out, you know, 10 villagers queuing up there. Is gonna, sometimes it's a godsend just to if you, your um, APMs uh, focus enough. Um, another thing too, our Ubu has finished or has um, dried out. So um, again, we have t more than enough wood production right now. Um, another thing too, if you're going to be raided, uh, you never really know if you're going to be raided. So you can, um, with this type of wood production, you can be dropping absolutely tons of map control all over. Um, and um, pastures etc um another thing is you can start cranking out a lot of army this is up um we'll put our con on one so there's just um, it gives a lot of flexibility to this build, the triple production, um, you know, having tons of production buildings helps a bunch. Bring our con over here. You'll be able to get a defensive arrow up for us. Yeah, so. This is kind of the build. It really ramps up your eco um, a lot faster having the, the, the 2 TC. Uh, do always try to get the superior mobility if you are going to have Gurs running around. Um, it's 1000% worth. Um, no reason not to get it. Um, these towers at your base, if you're not getting uh, pushed super heavy and you do have breathing space, I do recommend picking up um, the um, the cannon towers and imp versus ballistas, the spring walls. Maybe one or two, but you don't want to do all of your towers immediately to ballistas um, to spring walls because you can lose a bunch of your units that way. Um, we do have, you know, three ranges, so we can always transition, so that's kind of the, the build, guys. It's, uh, it's not, um, always the best option against certain civs, against Avacid, you're going to be outboomed against China, you're going to get outboomed, um, against Rus, your aggression is going to be so late, you're probably going to be outboomed, um, so against certain civs, it's not. It's definitely not worth. But I feel like against certain civs, like England, I feel like England is always is a civ that's almost always um um uh going some sort of two TC boom play. They're almost always trying to rush fast castle. So I do I do feel like it's a good play to um to kind of fight them um. On their you know on their grounds by you know aging up a little slower um, another thing here too is um, I don't have any siege workshops plenty of wood um, that's definitely one thing that I suffer in or I forget to do a lot but you can 100% uh, drop a bunch of siege workshops and um, yeah I think it's pretty important to do it as well um, so yeah, that's pretty much the build, guys. Um, you can do a lot of min-maxing here as well in terms of um, changing how effective everything is. Um, uh, 
and yeah, just make sure to use uh, your resources pretty efficiently, and uh, should be fine. This build is pretty pretty strong. Um, uh, maybe not the best build, but um, again, I think it's really uh, opponent based. So thanks uh, for watching, guys. This is just the uh, Mongol fast double TC uh, with a wheel bro. And uh, yeah, just uh, I'll probably do another um, build order guide for kind of a rush build. And uh, we'll just kind of go from there. Sorry, I'm not going to play ranked today, I don't think. It was super sore from the game. Stuff, so um, thank you again for watching, guys. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.